Ms. Whitby, you want to call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Ross? Here. White? Here. Taylor? Here. Robinson? Here. Gaines? Here. Baggett? Here. Height? Here. And Witcher? Present. The quorum is present, sir. Uh, thank you, Ms. Whitby. Uh, uh, can we stand for the prayer to be led by Alderman Baggett, followed by the pledge by Alderman Gaines? Bow your heads, please. Father, we thank you for this time together tonight when we can come together and make decisions for the city of North Little Rock and our community. Father, be with us. Help us make good decisions, godly decisions. Be with those that are sick tonight and couldn't be here. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. The minutes of the previous meeting be approved as submitted uh, on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Uh, thank you, Ms. Whitby. Uh, I've got a uh, couple of... Uh, of, of acknowledgments and presentations, and I'm going to ask while I comment on them if uh, Alderman, you know, two of our Aldermen, Witcher and uh, Robinson, uh, could go down to the platform and assist. Taylor. And, uh, Taylor. Taylor. And Taylor, okay. Uh, to go down to the platform and assist. I was th called on Alderman. Uh, well, of course, I guess it's, it's, it's certainly of, uh, of, of wisdom because. You know, our two council members are covering a good part of their district. I think a big part of uh, uh, Richard Carroll and Tracy Steele, uh, both our representative senator. senator uh, Richard, do I see you? I know I see Tracy. Yeah, right there. Okay. Uh, if y'all would uh, rise and come to the platform, uh, uh, let me just uh, acknowledge uh, the last session of our General Assembly. In the Senate, uh, Senator Steele, Tracy Steele. Tracy's been representing us for a number of years. Uh, and Richard Carroll. Richard uh, you know, is uh, concluding or concluded his first term uh, as a representative uh, for a, a, a good section of, uh, of Ward uh, 2. And annually, the Arkansas Municipal League, uh, at its uh, regular convention in Hot Springs, acknowledges the contribution and support of uh, not all by any means, but certain legislators who exemplify their, uh, uh, their duties as it relates to uh, municipalities. Uh, and uh, both Senator Steele and uh, uh, Representative Carroll were acknowledged at the uh, Municipal League in, in Hot Springs annual meeting. Uh, you know, they just finding out what we've known all along and that that uh, that it, certainly with representative or certainly with Senator Steele as as well as now we're learning from Representative Carroll, you know, how much we are benefited uh, and appreciate uh, their uh, diligent, tireless, and uh, ongoing efforts as now we go into annual session. So, you know, we're looking forward to next year uh, uh, as we see our first session uh, f uh, on uh, on an annual basis. And we appreciate both of you and underline, you know, this uh, acknowledgement from the Arkansas Municipal League uh, throughout the state, but particularly as it relates, relates to North Little Rock and, uh, and your community. So I'm going to ask all of them before, uh, you know, our two uh, council members might make any comments, but present those plaques to you and certainly uh, read what's on the plaques. Uh, join me in thanking our two, uh, uh, two of our members of the delegation to the Arkansas General Assembly. The plaque says, the Arkansas Municipal League Distinguished Legislator Award. In honor of those who demonstrated exemplary service that benefited cities and towns of Arkansas, is hereby bestowed upon Honorable Tracy Steele, State Senator, presented at the 75th Annual Convention, Arkansas Municipal League, June 17th. 2009. It says the same thing. Okay. 
The Arkansas Municipal League Distinguished Legislator Award in honor of those who demonstrated exemplary service that benefited cities and towns of Arkansas is hereby bestowed upon Honorable Richard Carroll, State Representative, presented at the 75th Annual Convention, Arkansas Municipal League, June 17, 2009. Okay. You gentlemen, either one of you care to say anything? Mayor, Council, let me thank you uh, for interrupting. I know what's going to be a very busy schedule and acknowledging uh, our work in the Arkansas General Assembly. Uh, you know, it, it, state government may be a little different because we choose our committees. And each year I've had the opportunity, I've, I've chose to be on city, county, and local committee. That's where most of the municipal league policies and legislations come to. And it's been an honor for me to serve. And I cho choose that committee because I, I care deeply about what happens uh, in my city, uh, all my cities that I represent, but particularly my home city here in North Little Rock. Uh, and our county. Uh, what happens in the work you do that we can support from the state uh, is critically important to me and it always has been. So I am honored to, to receive this. Uh, I didn't expect it and I appreciate that. I didn't know that the, all the cameras, gonna be, cameras was going to be here for, while we received this award tonight, Mayor. But uh, They have a good reason to be here. <laughs> we appreciate y'all showing up. It's an honor and again we do appreciate your service. You know we're in for a session and we have a lot of meetings but it never stops for you, so I, I really respect you making the commitment to be public servants. Thank you again. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> Mayor, council members, I uh, appreciate this award that uh, the Municipal League has bestowed on me, and also, uh, as the Senator said, uh, tireless work that y'all do. Uh, I've watched y'all several times. Uh, you, you're here. You're always diligently working at uh, trying to better your community. And uh, with that example, that's sort of the uh, example that I followed at the state uh, level. I tried to uh, resemble what I heard and, and felt from the uh, council here over at the state uh, house. And I also appreciate this. Um, by uh, the election that I was uh, uh, won this race and was uh, elected by the uh, the citizens of this uh, district, I appreciate them uh, giving me the chance to to represent them at the state capitol. Thank you. We appreciate you helping us. Thank you. Uh, could we go, uh, and, and again, those gentlemen are going to have double duty as, uh, as we go into annual session, so we sure appreciate uh, your continued uh, involvement in assisting uh, this community as well as uh, communities all across the state by your advocacy of municipal uh, issues. Thank you. Uh, communications, do I have a blanket motion? So moved. Uh, any council member want to pull one? Number three, please. Number three. Uh, I want to point out that number seven uh, is requesting uh, an, an authorization, I assume, by not, well, let's just go ahead and pull that so we can act on it separately. So three and seven are be pulled. That means one, three, four, five, and six. Well, one, two, four, five, and six. On the motion? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Number three, do you want it read or by title? You can read it, please. This is a letter dated August 15, 2009 to Bill Yates from Alan Tetkowski, Secretary and Treasurer. It's regarding uh, Secretary and Treasurer for the North Little Rock Firefighters IAFF Local Number 35. It's regarding endorsement for the location of the new Soldiers Memorial. Mr. Yates, the International Association of Firefighters Local Number 35, North Little Rock has given careful review of the possible locations for the North Little Rock Memorial honoring the soldiers of these United States. It is the opinion of Local 35 that the location at 5501 MacArthur is best suited for this memorial. A major consideration for this opinion is that Military Drive is the primary gateway to Camp Robinson. At the regular local meeting on August 3rd, the membership voted unanimously to support this location. Please consider this letter our endorsement of 5501 MacArthur as the location for the memorial. 
If you have any, question, any further questions or concerns for us in, reg in this regard, please contact us at your soonest convenience. Fraternally, Alan D. Tedkowski, Secretary, IAFF Local 35. Thank you. Did we pull a number four? Uh, no, but we might as well balance it out. So read number four, uh, can we, even though we've already uh, Can we get a motion and a second and a vote on yeah, the Yeah, second, move. second to accept and file. Second. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Anyway, so we don't do it out of order. I'm going to go ahead and have, ask that four be read, but let's go ahead and deal with seven. Would you read it by title? Yes, sir. Number seven. Uh -huh. It is a... Memorandum from Joe Smith, uh, Director of Commerce and Government Affairs. It's regarding the RV park. Uh, let me get, could I have a motion to accept and file? Uh, I'll move. Explain it. Uh, you know, essentially, I know that there's been some discussion about the RV park, so I didn't want anything happening out there that the council wasn't aware of and, uh, and, and authorized. Uh, you know, I think this, this memo, which is number seven, uh, uh, underlines really the success so far with little effort on the part of uh, promotion in terms of you know letting folks know that you know i think we already have uh, had over you know are close to seventy thousand dollars in income uh our uh and i'm not sure exactly what the expenses are but i think we're already in the black for this year you know with you know the biggest part of the year to go and you know things like razor rock and you know other activities uh, uh smoke on the river next year and Con convention coming in that r are very confident that you know that, that we'll we'll make our debt service plus some uh, and payback will even be quicker as we you know this become more known you know there is sufficient funds in uh, riverfront development on the capital side and so essentially this says uh, you know our, our seeks the council okay uh, you know even though from a legal standpoint we didn't need to do this we like to work obviously and keep everybody informed so it's it, it rest assured if the council doesn't authorize this we won't do it but you know the money's in the budget the capital accounts there and this simply indicates that we'd like to build some uh, roads out there and uh, and and seeking council's uh, authorization to do that uh, so with your accepting and filing of this uh, you know we're we're going to go forward with building those roads any questions, discussion? Uh, the motion to accept and file and authorize as a way I'm going to take it. Uh, any further discussion on the motion then? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Paget? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. All right, now, I know it wasn't a part of our original motion, but just to balance things out, since three was read, let's read four. Number four is a letter dated August 18, 2009, to members of the City Council regarding the site for the Veterans Memorial. I want to register my strong objection to the City contributing any money to build the proposed monument at the property of my friend's place, Bar and Grill, at the intersection of MacArthur Drive and Military Road. I think it would be insulting to the men and women who serve in our armed forces to place their monument on the parking lot of a beer joint where there are so many other there are so many other more desirable locations or sites with ample parking. If Mr. Yates wants to do this with his own funds or can raise private funds, so be it. But I do not want city money to be used for it at that location. Sincerely, Andy F. Aldrich. We've already accepted and filed, so really there's no motion needed on that. Uh, uh, can we go on to uh, public hearings? Yes, sir. And uh, with that, I note. Let me uh, let me mention how I'm going to go forward with the first public hearing. Uh, you know, I'd indicated at the last council member that it was my intent to call for a vote, and I guess in some respects, you know, that could be synonymous with uh, dispose of, you know, 0948, which is the first public hearing. You know, I'm going to, and I know there's several that have signed up for it, and I'm I'm still going to, you know, obviously offer the microphone that are those that are here, uh, but before I, you know give the direction of what I've decided on on this legislation I'd like to make sure that we all know what we're talking about uh, so I'm going to ask Miss Whitby to read the operative legislation we don't need to worry about the where is clauses but just read you know the the legislation itself if you have it uh, in front of you and let's all be real clear about what this legislation actually says that would do to the codes of, of our codes. Ms. Whitby? So you want the title and the sections only? Just harassment of persons for, you know, as amended. Okay. Um, 
This is 00948, an ordinance amending North Little Rock Municipal Code to add a section making harassment of persons traveling across city rights of way a misdemeanor offense. And then in the section, section one, that the North Little Rock Municipal Code is hereby amended to add the following section, section 66136, harassment of persons traveling across city rights of way. Uh, it is unlawful to taunt, threaten, or otherwise harass a person traveling across a city right of way. Such, such actions include a. Knowingly throw an object at or in the direction of a person traveling across the city right of way. B. Make a threat for the purpose of frightening or disturbing a person traveling across any city right of way. C. Sound a horn, shout, or otherwise, otherwise direct sound toward a person traveling across any city right of way for the sole purpose of frightening or disturbing the person traveling across any city right of way. D. Knowingly place a person traveling across any city right of way in apprehension of immediate physical injury or engage in conduct that creates a risk of death or serious physical injury to a person traveling across the city right of way. A person who violates the provisions of this section is guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction shall be fined not less than $250 nor more than $1,000. And then uh, section two that all ordinances right. or parts thereof, et cetera. Let me, and, and our city attorney can, can comment on this, what this seems to have taken on an aura over the last several council meetings of, uh, we'll say, uh, uh, hitting uh, users of the right of way uh, you know, against each other may be too strong, but certainly recalling instances where you know, one has maybe taken advantage of the other in a way they use the right of way, you know, whether it be a cyclist uh, you know, running a stoplight or whether it be a motorist uh, coming too close and shouting uh, or I mean even heard some people throwing objects. Uh, you know, the one thing I think that's obvious, and I guess this was one of the prime reasons that I moved this legislation forward, is that, you know, any time, you know, a four-wheel motor vehicle tangles with a two-wheel, whether it be a motorcycle or a bicycle or a pedestrian, in all likelihood, you know, the four-wheel vehicle is going to come out better. Uh, and, and so, you know, my major concern is we increase our uses of right-of-way by those who are more likely to be injured or hurt. I want them to know the rules of the road as well as those others to know that the road is being used and has rights to be used by others. But as you've heard me say at pretty much every council meeting that we've talked about this, where there are rights, there are responsibilities. And, and what this has, has gotten to, and, and it may be a little bit of what might have gone in, in, on in Missouri, and I certainly thank you know, Alderwoman Ross for exploring that, you know, it's maybe been a little bit more disruptive than constructive. And, uh, and, and that's the last thing that I want to do or ever had any intention to do. And so at this point, you know, well, and let me just ask another question. Mr. City Attorney, you and I hadn't had a chance to talk about this, but I know some of this language that's in my amendment, with your help, is basically the same thing as on the books for an assault. You know, an assault, I mean, a, a, a assault is, a, is, you know, is, a, is an allegation, a threat to put somebody in immediate, you know, worry of their physical harm. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure, I hadn't checked the, you know, the statutes just lately, but I'm pretty sure that that's a criminal uh, violation punishable by, you know, uh, fine and, and or perhaps imprisonment. That's true. The verbiage is very similar. Very similar. And, and I, the only one that I had a little concern about whether that was an assault is subparagraph C. Uh, and, and that's a much more serious offense, you know, than what this legislation would entail. So it's my belief, you know, that most of what is here is already covered. You know, and, and, and again, my, my desire was simply to raise the consciousness of people as we move into, I think, an ever-increasing likelihood of more and more people using our urban right-of-ways you know, in a way that they're legally entitled to under state law, and I frankly would defend. I mean, I'm not trying to put it off on, on state law as being you know, the cop-out, because I, I agree with state law, and I agree with that, that more likelihood of people, both pedestrians and non-motorized uh, you know, vehicles using our rights away. It's just my desire that we all learn about it. And for that reason, the last thing I want to do is cause a vote that may or may not pass this legislation. That's not nearly the important thing, because again, I think there are legislation on the book that is actually more serious of offense for, if not all, most of what is enumerated in, in this legislation. So it's my intent 
you know, to pull this down, to not do, you know, not ask for a vote on this, but to certainly indicate to the council and the community, you know, that whether I refer it for study by our bicycle friendly, uh, you know, group or whether, you know, I, you know, look at other directions, uh, the rest assured, I've already visited with Chief Bradley. Uh, we've discussed what education that we might have in terms of, of, of sharing with non-motorized uh, bicyclists and others that use our right-of-ways, more of their responsibilities. I mean, I don't intend to not do anything that I was not planning on doing in terms of education in the beginning. But, you know, I, I certainly don't want people to vote yay or nay on what I think is some misperception out there and even, in fact, may very well be covered by a much more serious offense that is criminally sanctioned and is already on the books. So, you know, and, 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 and those that have signed up are certainly welcome to, to come comment, but I'm going to pull this legislation down and, uh, and, and we're going to, you know, work at it, uh, you know, continue to work at it as far as I'm concerned. You know, from an educational standpoint, I want to acknowledge, you know, to all folks out there, you know, that that what is worded in here to me is covered by much more serious criminal action already, if not all of it, most of it. So if somebody throws something at a anybody, uh, whether it be a cyclist or pedestrian throwing a rock at a car, which I know sometimes occurs, or vice versa, you know, don't hesitate to come and let us uh, know, or at least the prosecuting attorney's office know, because they'll issue an aff you'll sign an affidavit and they'll issue a warrant. Uh, so, you know, by me pulling this down, please don't think that the offenses that are enumerated here are not punishable, and that if somebody's aggrieved, they ought to go to the proper authorities and share that with them, and certain action will be taken, you know, as far as, uh, as, as most of the acts that are complained of in, in this legislation. So with that, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just indicate right up front, and you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and, and call the legislation, and I'll, you know, withdraw it, you know, for, you know, whatever I think might be the most appropriate later. But uh, at this point, I, you know, I, I, what what appears to be happening is the last thing I wanted to happen, and 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 I, you know, will be starting to be repetitive if I say it again. So. Ms. Whitby, uh, before we call it open for public hearing, would you read the legislation? This is an ordinance amending the Northern Rock Municipal Code to add a section making harassment of persons traveling across city rights away a misdemeanor offense, third and final reading. Okay, now I want to withdraw it and, uh, and I'll decide what's the most appropriate way to pursue the goals, which you know, I intend to continue to pursue, as I've, I've indicated uh, you know, previously. Uh, let me make one other comment before I open this for public hearing. Uh, you know, we, you know, we'll, we'll bring our lunch, but I want y'all to our supper. But right now we've got about an hour and 10 minutes if everybody takes their three minutes uh, to speak. Now, not all of us has to speak on, you know, on this legislation. There are three public hearings, uh, and that would extend itself, you know, by people coming and going. So you're looking at probably somewhere an hour and a half to two hours if everybody took their three minutes. So I want to emphasize that at this point, you know, our rules provide for three minutes. You know, I'm going to ask you to consider, uh, number one, you know, shortening your time if you decide to come up there. You know, you don't have to take all your three minutes. Number two, you know, is if somebody else says virtually the same thing, you know, that, that you intend to say or covers your same point, you know, you know, you might say me too or something to that effect. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is, you know, some of you at the first, you know, aren't going to let us, I mean, you're going to have to stay here and that's fine too if, if you want to, but, you know, our, our, our comments on allowing folks to speak is certainly something we believe in, but it, it's starting to grow. And, uh, and so we're looking at right now an average of about an hour and a half to two hours, you know, on those that have signed up and that doesn't count the one, two, three, four that have asked to speak at the end of the meeting. So, you know, I just want you to know that, you know, we're, we're here and we certainly are appreciative of you being here and want to hear what you say. But, you know, you know if you don't need, if you feel somebody else has said it or you don't need to take the three minutes, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll certainly be appreciative. With that, let me go ahead and open the uh, microphone on uh, the legislation that I just withdrew with the comments I made. And I know there were three or four that appeared to be here to want to comment on that and if you still do come to the microphone and let me put that umbrella over you 
Yes, Mayor Scott Miller. I live downtown, 214 West 5th. Thank you for pulling it down, not because I was for or against it, but thank you for bringing up the education issue. That's what I wanted to briefly talk about. We pass ordinances, whether it be walking down the middle of the street, whether it be recycling with green bins, whatever, and we have lots of codes, lots of ordinances in that way. Um, many of which are not enforced are problems for our codes department and I want to thank you for committing to education with that before I came down here I took a 30 seconds and googled under um, video for bicycle motorist safety found 417 public access videos that I hope will show up on the city's website and or channel 4 and I hope the high school with their wonderful video department will work with the League of Cyclists and developing some cycling safety. I feel you'll reach out and touch a whole lot more people that way than, will, than you will with an ordinance and make a true difference. It may not be as measurable to the voters in the end where you say, I passed this law, but I truly believe you will make much more of a difference on the streets of our city and I thank you. And that's our intent. Uh, microphone's still open for those who wanted to speak on this legislation. Okay, uh, thank you for those who didn't speak. We appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> not that we don't want to hear your comments. Uh, uh, the, next, uh, the next item is uh, a public hearing on, uh, uh, let me run it over, on uh, Lakewood Recreational uh, uh, Parking District. And I know that, I think uh, Alderman Ross, is there another sponsor on that? Uh, Okay, you want to introduce that and then we'll see if anybody's here to talk about it? Uh, what this is, uh, when we redid all the parking ordinance, we included where each group, where different groups were able to form their own parking districts. I know in the past that some aldermen had tried to pass a citywide no parking in their yard uh, and there was not enough support citywide, so we went about this by being able to produce parking districts. Uh, Lakewood Recreation Improvement District in January of 2008 sent me a letter asking if there was some way that we could find for them to be able to prohibit cars being parked in the front yard and this is what this is. Uh, basically this is the, the actual legislation tonight. Uh, and that's 0 0960. Uh, so is there anyone here that has signed up? I think I see a few names that want to speak on this legislation. If so, come to the microphone, identify yourself, and uh, you know, uh, again, we look forward to your comments. Mayor, City Council members, thank you for the opportunity to let me speak to you tonight. I'm Ken Sullivan. I work for Lakewood Property Owners Association and the Lakewood Recreational Improvement District Number 4. Uh, one of our missions as an improvement district, and I'm speaking for the board of directors of the improvement district, is to make decisions that help to improve property values of our homes in the area. We believe that by you giving us the opportunity to apply for this restricted parking district, that it will indeed aid us uh, in helping to accomplish that mission and I want to thank you for that opportunity. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the Consul, Nate Brandis, Ward 4, resident under the Lakewood Recreational Improvement District Number 4. A few points and questions that I have on the application itself. It contains two rules. Rule A, no parking in front or side yards except within a carport, garage, or upon a proper parking surface. Now this is no problem for most uh, because those residents in, in question have options and most of those options will not incur any cost. They can simply prepare the carport or the garage to take care of parked vehicles. Very little cost involved. They can move the offending vehicles from the lawns to the street to be parked in front of their homes or their neighbors. Again, no cost involved. Or if they want to, spend a little money to take care of compliance. The North Little Rock Zoning Ordinance allows them to construct additional parking pads on their properties with direct access to the street. And those additional driveways or parking pads can co-equal up to 50% of their front yards, as long as those pads have access to the street. 
So that is a cost option, but one that some of the residents may take the direction to do. Let's look at rule B, no parking commercial or large recreational vehicles. A little confusion here that needs to be cleared up, please. Alderman Height, one of the original sponsors of the ordinance, states that, yes, RVs, large RVs, can be parked on approved parking surfaces or in the carport or garage. To back him up, last Thursday at the Lakewood Property Owners Association office and the Lakewood Improvement Recreation District, a staff member in the office answered the question placed to her regarding parking of large RVs in Lakewood and she stated yes they can be parked on approved parking pad surfaces in the garage or carport. Then we have an opposing view I believe stated by Alderwoman Ross that states there is no RV parking whatsoever in Lakewood. Period. So we're a little confused and I hesitate to speak further because I really don't know where I'm at based on two alternate sponsors views plus the Lakewood Improvement District stating yes you can park on a pad. Now many families purchased in good faith their RV recreational vehicles. They did so without any consideration or concern about parking monthly fees that would be incurred by so doing. And motor homes is a phrase that has been tossed out to define large recreational vehicles within console. To clarify, based on the specification in the ordinance concerning an eight foot or higher stipulation, and we're not talking just about motor homes, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about fifth wheel and bumper tow camping trailers all pickup slide-in campers, all pontoon boats, and any sport or ski boats that may have a structure that exceeds eight feet in height. So we want to be clear on that. Granted some residents, sir? Getting close. Thank you. Granted some residents can handle the additional cost involved, others may have a difficult time. And in this economy, it may be difficult to satisfy that by being forced to sell their property. In summation, I just would ask that we show some compassion and heart towards the fact that there is going to be some economic hardship incurred by some of the residents to satisfy the compliance regarding their large RV parking vehicles and boats. And please clear the confusion up. Thank you. Let me just, one quick thing. We're a little out of, Nate, one of the things is, is you're a little ahead of yourself, uh, but that's okay because we've already done it. I, what I'm saying is that we're not talking about, at this point, we're not on 58, uh, or, or it's 058. We're on 60, which just has to do with the uh, restricted parking that uh, was, uh, uh, was currently up for public hearing. So anybody that wants to talk on 60, and, and you know, we'll note, your comments and we'll save them for just a second but we have two public hearings actually three uh, this is in relation to 60 and if there's anybody else that has signed up for that fine uh, if not we'll go ahead and adjourn that public hearing uh, 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 and then the next public hearing is on uh, electrical electric electronic changeable copy signs uh, that there are two issues up here, one with a moratorium and two with the signed legislation itself. And then we'll go into any other legislation that people have signed up for. So it's just a tad bit ahead, but we got your comments, Nate. Uh, so any, I don't see anybody else on 60. So let me adjourn that public hearing and now move to the third and final public hearing before we have general comments on legislation. Uh, and that is on uh, electronic changeable copy signs, Alderman. There are several council members uh, that have signed up on, on that, uh, sponsoring that legislation, and it's my understanding that, uh, 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 was it Alderman uh, Witcher, uh, you're the lead council member, so I'll let you introduce that, and then we'll open it for public comment. <clears throat> Mayor, we have, uh, over a period of time, have had a number of discussions regarding uh, changeable copy signs and the lighting of those signs and the appropriateness of those signs uh, under the, the auspices of the City Council. Uh, we had an opportunity to meet several weeks ago uh, in a committee type forum and just talk very openly about 
our concerns and uh, discuss what we thought might be the best remedy for uh, the changeable copy signs. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the deeper we got into it, and, and this has been going on for, since April, uh, we find that both applicable law uh, and regulations throughout the country are being challenged on a regular basis from a legal standpoint. And uh, so there's very little guidance to date uh, that we can utilize to, to formulate whatever policy you want to, to form. Uh, and there were several other issues that we discussed, uh, concerned about our neighborhoods, uh, the appropriateness of, of those signs, and there's just not really a good way from our perspective at this time to, to deal with those measures. So uh, what we're bringing to you is a recommendation to, to hold off uh, and, and establish a, an additional time moratorium which would begin uh, in actually in April of this year and extend for as much as two years. And that, that's a recommendation that we have. And uh, you know, if someone has a better idea, if someone uh, thinks that we need to do something different, then you must certainly uh, you know, speak, speak up and, and let's talk about it. So. With that introduction, uh, I'm going to consider, unless you have an objection, that uh, you know, comments on uh, the moratorium, 0957, but perhaps maybe the, the more uh, popular one, if we want to say that with regard to people wanting to make comments, and or, you know, 0959, which is uh, more substantive legislation. Uh, you know, I, are, would you say those two are somewhat companion, Alderman Witcher? Uh, the the second piece of legislation uh, deals specifically with regulation of existing uh, changeable copy signs in order to, to provide some guidance for those until we, we finalize whatever uh, regulations we're going to, to establish at some point in time. Well, I guess it says convene a public hearing regarding electronic changeable copy signs. Are those separate or together? Uh, separate mode. All right. Well, that, let's do let's do first things first. Then uh, uh, let's go ahead and have any of those who want to talk on the moratorium <laughs> issue, and then we'll uh, you know visit about the second issue, which is 59. So anybody wanting to speak on 00957, please uh, come to the microphone and try to be as succinct as possible. With that, the microphone's open. Thank you, Mayor. I'm Mike Colson. I'm president of Colson Oil Company, headquartered at 15th and Pike for since 1969. And I'm, I'm a little confused about what the moratorium will do. What, I'm a, what I need is the continued ability to put up changeable electronic price signs for motor fuel. Uh, what I passed around are two examples of the only two signs I have put up. One is at Canis and Shackleford in Little Rock. It's a Shell station. One is a Valero station in Moralton. Those signs have one color. They don't change unless I need to go up or down on the price. They don't flash. They don't scroll. They're just there like the current price signs are there until they are changed. Uh, it's safe for changing for employees. Uh, the current technology is about 25 years old with the plastic numerals and the suction cup that's about 10 feet long. Lots of folks who have done that get hit in the head by wind and so forth, and it's a fairly dangerous situation. These new signs allow us to change from the sign or inside the store. Uh, in my budget plan for next year, it was my intent for all 15 locations that we supply motor fuel to in the city of North Little Rock uh, to install these new signs. It is the latest technology, and I'd appreciate the opportunity to continue to do that uh, and not violate your moratorium or your ordinance. Thank you. Any questions? Mayor, can we ask a question of the... Uh, <clears throat> sure. Mr. Colson, you've got, uh, it's my knowledge that you supply gasoline to how many stations throughout the state of Arkansas? Uh, about 230. Are any of the cities in the state of Arkansas prohibiting you of placing this type of sign in any of those locations? Charlie, to my knowledge, no. 
I know a year ago I rode around Hot Springs, and I was amazed that most of my competition has already done that, and I was sort of oblivious to that. So I don't believe they have. Thank you. Follow on Ross. On the first one, uh, you know, it shows the sign and has the fuelman underneath here. Does that? I mean, are there scrolling words on that? No, or no that's, all, everything just, else is stationary, stationary plastic signs. We're all used to seeing. Thank you. Thank you. You know, just hand it to both sides and let them uh, circulate it. Uh, and one of the things, if, if you are going to uh, have anything you want to pass out to council members, if you give it to Ms. Whitby, uh, uh, then we'll start it coming from the city clerk's angle. Uh, uh, so feel free to go to our city clerk and, and, uh, and you know, if not now, anytime as soon as you'd like to get that to her. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Jerry Hodge, owner of Science First in North Little Rock. Um, and I've spoken here on the same issue you know, before. Uh, basically, I want to cover uh, two or three things. Uh, obviously, being in the sign business, I'm not in favor of, mor of a moratorium. Uh, I think it was expressed very uh, succinctly before, just before me as to why, why it's not a good idea. Uh, any moratorium on digital signs would affect not only just the, the digital signs on uh, auto dealerships, they would affect uh, time and temperature signs. Those are digital signs. Uh, gasoline changing signs, all of that's in, encompassed in the, in the category of, of uh, digital signs. Uh, we think that Robert Boyles and his folks have done an excellent job, probably one of the best in the country in terms of documenting the specifications on how you regulate digital signs, both in terms of brightness, frequency of change, etc. cetera. Uh, what I handed you was a, I'm a member of the International Sign Association, which is a group out of Alexandria, Virginia that represents the sign business both in the U.S. and internationally. Uh, and I'm very active in that group, so I, I sent them a copy of the ordinance. And this was the reply that I got. It's addressed to, to uh, Alderman Witcher because he was recognized as the chairman of the, of the group. And I wanted to point out just one, one aspect. Uh, uh, he emphasized one thing that was uh, emphasized in the, as one of the reasons in the um, ordinance. Uh, having to do with the cost of the signs, uh, and their conclusion is that's clearly and undeniably factually incorrect because uh, basically, I, I'm not going to read all this, but basically the idea is that on-premise signage is the most important thing for a, for a small business in terms of making their business rec you know, known. You know, people, you know, you can do billboards, you can do whatever, but nothing replaces that sign on front of the building because that people see as they drive by. Uh, the cost of on-premise signage can be amortized over a period of time, longer period of time, depending on the amortization you know, that, you, that you choose and that tax will allow. So even uh, in the case of a digital sign, even though the, the initial cost for a small business may be fairly significant, over the long haul, the cost per viewing by, by uh, people that you're trying to sell to is less. So basically, you know, my comments are, you know, in terms of uh, the sign business, I think it's very evident signs are important, extremely important, especially small businesses. I think uh, North Little Rock uh, is, is no exception to that. We really need the recognition. Uh, being in the sign business, obviously I'm prejudiced, but I'm also a sign uh, business owner, and I don't know what I would do without that sign in front of my business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, microphone's still open, and we're Concentrating on the moratorium at this point, uh, if I could uh, acknowledge the principal topic. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, my name is Richard Beard. I am a resident of the city and have owned a business here in the city for about 25 years. Um, I, I do not have a dog in this fight in that the business, my type of business, uh, sign electronic or otherwise, would be of no benefit. I do, however, own another business outside of the jurisdiction, and I actually looked at an electronic sign a year or two ago and decided that that was not um, a good return on cost there. But I think it's appropriate that I get to make that decision and not you folks. Um, being a businessman, um, it seems like the things that I hear on a national level out of Washington, I and my kind have become the enemy. Um, we may provide the jobs and the tax base 
and so forth, but um, everybody wants to tell us what we can do and what we must do, and um, it just gets tiresome, and we have enough of that, I think, at the state and federal level that I, um, the less I get, have to get pushed around at the local level, um, the better that I would like it. Um, I would sure hate to be a business um, out there on Maumelle Boulevard on the North Little Rock side that couldn't put a sign up and have a competitor two blocks down the road that could put a sign up. Um, it just didn't seem right to me. Um, well, you probably do what you're going to do. Um, but some of us are getting closer and closer to haven't had enough. <laughs> That's what I've got to say. Thanks. Appreciate it. My name is Charlie Knott. I'm president of uh, Northeast Lakewood Associated Neighborhoods. Uh, the comments I have this evening are my personal comments. I am in favor of this moratorium as spelled out in this ordinance for uh, the same reasons that I think are stated quite well in the ordinance itself, that this type of sign can be a potential hazard uh, to drivers and uh, it can have an adverse impact on uh, the appearance of our neighborhoods and communities and certainly uh, because of the brightness and action of the signs can be a nuisance uh, uh, to the surrounding areas. Uh, I think uh, it's a complex issue. I think it will take a comprehensive legislation to properly regulate the permitting installation and operation of these signs, but I think the legislation must also be comprehensive enough going forward because this is such <coughs> rapid changing technology. And uh, I think this moratorium will certainly provide time for that kind of legislation, and I would ask that each of you support that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Just, just a second. I think we, well, I think we had one, quick, one question. quick question, please. Yes, sir. Would you be opposed if the if the signs were on on the main arteries of four lane roads here in, in North Little Rock? Only, only. The only place they could put them would be on a four lane highway. I think uh, that's the kind of thing that has to be decided in uh, in the legislation. I think it would certainly, from the standpoint of the appearance of the community in our neighborhoods, an all out ban would be the best. But if, our, uh, if the city council is to consider having them in certain areas, then I think it would really require all the aldermen, both those in favor and against changeable copy signs, working together to come up with the best legislation to properly regulate them in those areas if they're to be used in certain areas. Thank you, sir. Microphone's open. Thank you. Identify yourself and take your three minutes or less. <laughs> Good evening and thank you. My name is Mike Fritz. I'm the uh, president of Little Caesars Pizza of Arkansas. We are a 25-year-old uh, company based here in uh, Sherwood, Arkansas. Uh, we have 17 stores in central Arkansas, employ about 350 employees, uh, and certainly pay tens of thousands of dollars a year. Uh, in, in taxes, and I want to speak uh, specifically to the electronic sign moratorium. You know, there's been concerns and issues raised about the uh, the safety features, and I would simply suggest or offer up that existing ordinances that the city already has addresses those very concerns, such as brightness, speed, effect, the display. All of these things can be controlled by uh, the, this, these new technologies. Uh, and, and certainly, I think those of us in the business community understand that those sorts of controls need to, be in, need to be in place. Our desire is to attract customers, not to distract them and put them into the median or into trees. So certainly, we're going to do our level best to assure that that can be affected. Um, the, the concerns about visual blight, uh, the, these technologies uh, cost tens of thousands of dollars and require a significant amount of design and time. We look at contrast, we look at colors, we look at presentation, we look at times of day. And I would submit to you that these new technologies 
uh, rather than being blight, are actually much more than much more dynamic than some of the things that we're used to, such as balloons, uh, banners, uh, and handheld shakers. Uh, in fact, you know, a, a strategy that we utilize. Uh, so again, I would submit from a, from a blight standpoint, these are actually more dynamic, more precise, uh, and, and more controlled than 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 other uses that that our industry has used in the past. With regard to interference with the homes, I wholeheartedly uh, acknowledge and respect the concerns of homeowners. Um, if my sign is too bright, if I'm shining into somebody's backyard, then absolutely I need to back that sign down. Maybe we control that by the hours of operation or the color codes. But I would submit to you over the last several months, the amount of time that I've spent and other colleagues have spent, that the technology is out there to find that middle ground to where we're not annoying we're not obtrusive, we're not distracting. However, on the other side, we are able to attract our customers, let them know we're here, and, and, and attract their attention to us. I would respectfully submit to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that a two-year moratorium is too long. This technology has been out there for years. It's been in use all over this country and all over the world. The information is readily available to us. I think the parameters and controls are in place, and I would volunteer myself and I think other members of the business community to participate in any sort of panel or discussion to come up with some reasonably agreeable features. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, we've got a couple quick questions. Uh, again, uh, if you don't mind, that's up to the, the panelists. And, uh, Not at all. I'd be happy to answer the questions. Uh, my question is based on something you said. Um, the statement of how do you attract without distracting and I know you made some other comments but what is that? The, the one thing that we've researched that we've looked into if you're too fast and, and, and too garish and it's not unlike th these signs are not unlike any other advertising medium whether it be TV radio or print if, if my print ad is obnoxious people are gonna throw it away if it's not g-rated I'm not gonna attract the families that I want to come to my store um, so what I mean by that is that we can attract by controlling uh, the speed and the effects and the content without becoming distracting. I know full well that if I blur a bunch of letters and fonts and neon colors across a sign when the traffic speed is 55 miles an hour, I'm causing some grief. If it's a 25 mile an hour speed limit, I have to be respectful and understanding of that. So it's going to be a fixed display. It's probably going to have no scrolling letters, and it may simply say, in our case, hot and ready pizza, $6. And it stays there for 15 seconds. That's where we need to work together, because it is up to, is it a four lane road? Is there a center left turn lane? Is it well lit? Is it heavily landscaped? My resistance to a two-year moratorium is that every single street that we all do business on is different from each other. We have to adjust. And those, like I said, the parameters are within the existing ordinances, and the technology exists within the offerings that are out there that we can make those adjustments. Yes, ma'am. I was just curious, do you have any franchises in Conway? We do have a franchise in Conway. You know, they have a total ban on this and have had for 10 years. Has that affected your business in Conway any? I can't answer that question because I've never been able to compare. We've, we've always dealt on static signage in Conway. We've never had the opportunity to try the digital signage. So it's, 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 it's one of those apples to oranges sorts of things. I don't know. I mean, we, we do everything we can in Conway to advertise in other mediums, print, radio, television, shakers, handbills, direct mailing. Uh, I'd love to put a digital sign up in Conway. I won't lie to you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Joe Melton. I live at Nine Lakewood Drive. A couple of things that Mr. Fritz said really brought my attention. Um, one is it sounds as though there aren't any studies to determine that this is a good thing. So we don't know that revenues are increased by this. I would never stand up here and ask someone not to sell signs. This isn't about signing, not putting a sign up. It's about digital signs, which although 
a sign company might say, or a person who purchases these signs might say, we're going to regulate them remotely. Within seconds, they can change what's on that sign. And they can change it to be something 24 hours a day. They could be in Japan and change that sign. So how are you going to regulate this? Um, I appreciate the fact that many of the businesses and the sign companies so far, the only people I've heard speak tonight are people who sell signs and they don't give them away. And so there is a special interest there, but they do have other signage that they can sell. And they can sell other signage that is not obtrusive, that is not in my face, in your face, it's not bright colored, it doesn't change at their whim or say what they want it to say. In our day and age, we know, in our day and age, we know that sometimes things are getting pretty tacky and there might not be things said on those signs that we want our children to see. And if we have a proliferation of them, if we don't go with this moratorium to study it and consider what we want to do, then a proliferation can come and we've got it and then if we need to pay for amortization or it's not what we really wanted, the cost is prohibitive. This isn't a banner. This is thousands of dollars for a sign. I have many, many pages here. I can tell you from, I have probably, let's see, 12 states and many cities in those states that have bans or strict restrictions, they're studying what to do. On a national level, they have had sign companies come in. Um, I could name some, but I won't here. Um, that have gone in and put the sign in anyway, and then they ask for forgiveness. And then it puts us in an awkward position of giving forgiveness but the moratorium is wonderful because it gives us time to see what other cities have done and consider that. And I think it's a very progressive thing that you're doing, that you're considering doing the moratorium until you get a handle on what other cities around the country are doing. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and I appreciate it. We've had a few applauses on both sides. I'm, I'm going to ask you if you could sort of keep your uh, uh, comments to the microphone and, uh, and, and let's just sort of refrain a little bit if we could uh, from, you know, uh, sharing your thoughts on a general way. Uh, so if I could ask that, I'd appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Scott Miller. I live down here in Argenta, 214 West 5th. I'm also a small business owner. I own three small businesses. I come here with mixed feelings. I'm going to speak in favor of the moratorium with some exceptions. Um, uh, it's a genie, frankly, if we let out of the bottle right now. We're going to be grandfathering in multiple signs. We have sign districts we're grandfathering in that we don't want to pay amortization for. Uh, you know, it's an issue. However, at the same time as a business owner, I feel it's unfair to wait two years f to make this decision. Um, as a business owner, I preferably would want at least no more than a year, if that. I mean, this, is a new, this isn't a new technology. It may be new to North Little Rock, but it's not a new technology and it's not an insurmountable problem. And frankly, as a business owner, if I, was, if I wanted an electronic sign, which I don't for any of my businesses, I would want an answer sooner than two years about what I was doing for an electronic sign. I would hope in the end that somehow you find a way to accommodate Mr. Colson. I personally don't feel an electronic changeable sign is a gas station number for the price of gas on the gas station. Um, if that's what we're calling electronic sign in this day and age of technology, um, a changeable sign, somehow we've warped that a little bit too far in terms of changeable signs in my opinion. Um, and I want to leave you with this thought. New technology creates new problems for cities. I'm on the cutting edge right now of looking at how I can use RDS, low power FM, to broadcast advertisements directly into your car as it goes by on certain radio channels or tap into your Wi-Fi on your car when your car is built with Wi-Fi. If you think you have a sign problem now, wait till it shows up on your dashboard. And it will in the next few years. <laughs> Thank you. Microphone is open.
Patrick Stair, 411 West 5th Street, and I support the moratorium, as some of you might not be surprised to find out. <clears throat> My uh, particular issue with the changeable signage is and has always been the safety issue, which I think it continues to be a problem, and I think research and other legislation around the country continues to support the safety problems with changeable signs. As far as the moratorium goes, one person's undue restriction on what they can do is another person's safety protection. And while the businesses may not like having certain restrictions on it, I, as a person who travels on the roads, like that particular restriction, as I like a lot of restrictions that we put on our businesses for purposes of safety, whether fiscal or physical. As long as, <clears throat> excuse me, as long as our signs, as long as businesses can put up signs that have any motion, that have any semblance of motion, and they can change any more frequently than once a day, then I am in favor of the moratorium and I think it should stay. Thank you. Thank you. Microphone's still open. Robert Fury, Indian Hills, Ward 4. I miss the old Burma shave signs. There used to be some on the Highway 365 northwest of here coming in from Quitman. I miss the traditional billboards I grew up with later on in the 60s and 70s. In the last 10 years or so, advertising has become quite invasive and there's many, many more forms of it. You know, the sides of buildings and uh, wraps on vehicles and uh, the proliferation of signs of all kinds in, in lots of places. Uh, I support Colson Oil's position with their use of their signs. I think signs first ought to be able to have a sign outside his business. I think that the existing city code is uh, woefully inadequate in uh, controls for land use and zoning. I think with good land use controls, good zoning controls, and intelligent codes that we can protect ourselves against invasive advertising. Uh, Mr. Fritz does not care for signs that are too garish. I agree, if, uh, our ordinances don't get into what's garish and what's not, and I think that gets into land use and zoning. Uh, Mr. Nod said this is a complex issue. I think pretty much everybody here will agree with it, uh, including the sign companies, if forced to give their honest opinion. Mostly I'm against the invasiveness of uh, certain types of advertising, a lot of types of advertising. Uh, I will be blunt and tell you that I don't care for the Cruise One sign up on JFK and Park Hill. I think that one of these days, the land use on the south side of I-40, uh, opposite First Pentecostal Church, there could be a land use over there that is not compatible with First Pentecostal Church's sign. I don't care for the sign at discount tires at JFK and Kerry. At late at night, when it's, it's a very residential neighborhood, and late at night when the spatial visibility is low, that sign is blinding. Uh, I understand that ACE signs out of Benton has installed a lot of signs, these electronic changeable copy signs in North Rock, including the one on Maumel that, that was noticed by the people in Walton Heights over across the river. Uh, I understand that when ACE signs installs one of these signs, they can offer the client either remote control of the brightness of that sign or the client can choose to do it themselves. In short, I believe that uh, we need the moratorium I would like to see a committee meet regularly. I don't think it'll take two years, but uh, please protect us from invasive advertising. Mr. Fury, your clock, your internal clock is pretty good. That was right on three minutes. Thank you. Uh, I'm good. Let me, uh, let me just, <laughs> it, it, you know, we, we may get a little light system to help me out, but I'm going to try a two-step process on this. I'm going to do an okay when we're at 15 seconds and then a stop uh, when we hit 30 uh, or three minutes. So 15 seconds ahead of time, two minutes and 45 seconds, you'll get this and three minutes, I'll give you this. All right, microphone's open. We're on uh, 57, the moratorium. 
Hello, I'm Dan Chapman with Chapman Service Company. I've had my business here in North Little Rock for 15 years now, and I was in the market for a digital sign. My competition has it. I think it's very unfair for you to tell me that I can't buy one. I've worked very hard with my company. I've employed North Little Rock people with my company, and if I can afford it, I'm going to buy it. What are you going to tell me next? My health care? Thank you for your brevity. <laughs> Microphone's still open. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, end the public hearing on the moratorium issue. And now we're talking about anybody that wants to speak on 59, the sign uh, issue. So uh, the microphone's open for, uh, and Alderman Witcher, you want to just quickly introduce that one? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, 59 basically is a, is a housekeeping issue regarding uh, standards uh, of, of lighting for change, existing changeable copy signs that we have within the city. Um, and it, we, there's both a table uh, and, uh, and some guidance on how much light they can put out. That is one of the issues that uh, continually has been at the top of everyone's list. Uh, I don't know what, I think that pretty well sums it up. Microphone's open on uh, 59. I'm uh, Donnie Copeland with Apostolic Church here in North Little Rock. I'm a pastor here. Uh, I was at the last meeting and I uh, was very interested to find out that one of our council people asked one of the proponents of the signs uh, for some reason where they were from. And then after reading the paper today and then hearing a couple of comments that some of the driving force behind the beginning of this seems to be uh, that someone in Little Rock complained. And, uh, and I'm not saying that's the main reason, but that, that maybe seemed to get the ball rolling. And uh, so I thought that was a little disingenuous that we would take someone who was a proponent for signage and try to find out where they're from and find out they're from somewhere besides North Little Rock, yet uh, the complaints from the other side of the river gets this ball rolling. You've heard from business owners here tonight uh, that have a vested interest in having signage. Uh, and so I think that's, that's very, very important. Uh, for our church, we have 77,000 cars a day that pass our building. Uh, although we are probably in the upper echelon, and I don't say that bragging, we're, we're greatly blessed to have the revenue uh, to buy a $150,000 sign uh, and have already made the commitment to do that. Uh, a, a family has already donated the money, and now we can't get the sign if you do this. And quite honestly, while we have $150,000 to buy a sign, that is a drop in a bucket to do in a television or radio program, or not program, but advertising campaign over a year or two or three years. So the best and really the only way that we can effectively advertise to the 77,000 people that pass our building in a day is a digital sign. All the other churches up and down uh, Highway 167 where we are, and I think Councilman uh, Alderman Gaines mentioned about four lane highways and so it puts us at a disadvantage and we don't feel like we're at all competing with other churches but what we are trying to do is let people know about our divorce prevention divorce care our after-school programs our programs for children disadvantaged children our reading programs all the things that we're doing and there's just simply no way in a, in a city this size to let them know without this type of signage uh, I also thought it was pretty interesting that it was mentioned about the moving uh, signage and how it was disruptive I think is the word used when I think it was pointed out last time the highway department rather than shirking from using moving signage and digital signage if you'll notice the highway department is increasing their use usage of digital and moving signage and, and uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 I asked someone very knowledgeable I said on a scale of 1 to 10 where does our strictness as far as how we rate signs North Little Rock where do we rate and they said probably somewhere in the seven to eight range, one being the laxest, ten being the strictest. So we already have a strict, uh, as far as uh, outlook and, and uh, our uh, uh, regulating signs. My wife asked me before I came here tonight, and, and Mayor, am I doing okay? I hadn't I, got the. But okay. just, 
Go ahead. I'm going right. to give you an extra five seconds because okay, I'm, I'm just getting hurry. ready to do it. But uh, my wife asked me, she said, look, you, you say normally these things are already decided. Said, said, why go? Why even go if it's already been decided? And I, I feel like probably it's already been decided. You guys are already, you already know how you're going to vote. You already know it's going to be two years. I mean, I've, I've been on councils. I've been on meetings. I, I know you don't go into a meeting not knowing what's going to happen. But I believe this. I believe that we have to stand up and we have to speak. And I thank you for that. North Little Rock has always been known. When I got here, mayor and council, you were known as a pro-business community. You've gotten business. We've gotten business from Little Rock. And I, I realize, I feel like this takes us in the opposite direction. I hope you would, that you would uh, strongly consider uh, doing away with this moratorium and this, uh, this whole thing. Thank you so much. Now, you know that if you say good things, you get a few extra seconds. So, uh. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Mr. Mayor, City Council, I'm Jason Offit, president of Ace Sign Company. And uh, from what I understand, this was put in effect in April of this year. And we're here four months later, and I think that the council has met one time on this. So it was, it was done for a study of the safety and such, and they've met one time and bounced a few ideas off each other, and we've made no decisions. So if we go for a two-year period, my feeling is, is we'll go for two years and go, well, sorry, we haven't decided anything yet. We're still going to ban these. And, and this is uh, just more restriction on our businesses that are struggling now. We're trying to compete against other cities, Sherwood, Little Rock. I think it's the wrong direction. I think we should try to help our businesses. Our federal government is, is putting stimulus plans like uh, cash for clunkers out, and what's the city doing? Looking for more restrictions. And I'll leave you with this. Will this help or hurt our businesses? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, again, we're on the sign issue. Uh, uh, the moratorium issue has uh, already been sort of adjourned at this moment. So the sign issue, which is 59, uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. I was about to uh, ask about that also. Uh, this 59 concerns the acceptable level of light output of electronic changeable copy signs. Uh, and I, under, I, I see that uh, the ordinance contains a criterion for what would be acceptable for a new sign. It has to do with the increase in the light, in the ambient light in the area with the sign off compared to with a, with a sign illuminated. And it's limited to an increase of, it's in the fourth whereas of 0 0.3 foot candles to ambient light. And in the second page is a table that goes along with that. And I, I think this is much better than the previous criterion that mentioned 300 foot Lamberts. And I don't know that the city has ever been able to measure foot Lamberts, but they don't now. And so I am happy to see a measurement that makes sense that can be uh, that a device can uh, be used for to determine compliance with the code. I suspect that these standards on the in this table on the second page of the ordinance uh, that have to do with the sizes of signs and the distance between the sign and the measuring device those probably have an intelligent source. I would like to know though for example for a couple of my favorite signs, how this table and how this criterion applies to the sign, the Cruise One sign in Park Hill on JFK. Would this standard, this uh, increase of 0 0.3 foot candles, would uh, does the Cruise One sign, does that fall within that? I don't know. Let's I, talk. Let's talk uh, to our city attorney after the. I mean, that's we're we're not, to talk Remember, to this is public comment section. We get into questions yeah. back and forth. I don't. I don't expect an answer. This is just my question, and I'm basically in favor of the ordinance. But I would like to know what this criterion gets some feel for it. Whether or not this criterion is reasonable, I suspect that it is. But I'd like some feedback, and I'd like to know how if uh, how the first Pentecostal church how that uh, if it's more or less than 0 0.3 foot candles increase. If it's 0.6, I'd like to know, just for comparison, thank you. Microphone's still open on 09 or 59. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjourn that portion of the public hearings. We're through our formal public hearings. All right, anybody else that signed up to speak on any other agenda item? Microphone's open. Hi, I'm Presley Melton of Nine Lakewood Drive, and I welcome this opportunity to speak to you about the parking ordinance and the change in it. I would, uh, again, I'm confused, I think many of us are, as to how RVs get treated in the new parking ordinance. I just ask the council to please be aware that our city has strict building codes to protect neighborhoods, and those building codes pertain, among other things, to setbacks from the street and setbacks from side property lines. When someone parks an RV that's 45 feet long and 13 feet high in their driveway, permanently or almost permanently there, that becomes like an addition to their home or a garage that they've just built. If someone wanted to build a garage that big or a bedroom on their house extending out over the building line, they would have to go before the Board of Adjustment to get special permission. And I don't understand why we think we need to allow someone who's purchased a motorhome to drive it home and park in their driveway and block the view of neighbors uh, homes and um, uh, otherwise change the whole face of the neighborhood. I appreciate those people have bought the RVs and I think they all need to also be very aware of the rights of people who live in the neighborhoods and have built their homes and want to keep it a neighborhood environment. Thank you. Thank you. Microphone's still open on anything else we hadn't talked about already that you've signed up for. My name's Charlie Knight. Um, this comment has to do with the comment that Nate made, Nate made earlier, so I'll try to be very brief with this. Uh, 4.3.1a does prohibit the parking, storing, or keeping of vehicles in front or side yards unless on an approved surface. 4.3.1b prohibits parking of commercial or large recreational vehicles in front or side yards or street. It doesn't mention unless on an approved surface. So uh, as stated earlier, uh, I think it's very important that this be clarified and that determination be made that the ordinance as amended is adequate to, uh, to go forward with because I think there has been some good effort already put into this in trying to clarify this. Thank you. Okay, I think not seeing anybody else coming forward, I'm going to go ahead and consider we pass the agenda item on public comment, uh, both public hearings as well as uh, uh, comments of folks who have signed up to speak to this particular legislation. With that, Ms. Whitby, unless you see differently, let's go to unfinished business. Um. There was a gentleman that wanted to, to speak on a, a condemnation. He signed up now. I didn't know if you wanted to wait until we called it. That's condemnation. Okay. We, we call those public hearings as we call okay. it legislation. Okay. So where shall we start? Unfinished business. RO 9118, Alderman Baggett and Gaines. We're going we're gonna to hold that. Okay. Uh, new business, RO 9133, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 1905 East 2nd Street in the city of North Little Rock to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. Okay, uh, as, uh, as we normally do, I'd like to get a motion uh, and a second, and then we uh, move. motion made and seconded uh, that uh, we uh, uh, adopt this legislation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call for a public hearing on 1905 East 2nd Street. Uh, this is in relation to condemnation of this property. Uh, the listed owner is Keith Kimball, K-I-M-B-L-E. Uh, so convene that public hearing. Uh, we're uh, open for comment on 1905 East 2nd Street, Keith Kimball. Uh, please Hello. state your name. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Reverend Derek Easter. I am the pastor of Bailey Chapel Baptist Church at North Little Rock. Um, and I'm coming today on behalf of this property asking if you all would consider um, 
uh, given us a uh, extending the uh, time to condemn this property to 60 days. We're in communication with Mr. Kimball about purchasing this property uh, and uh, clearing it off ourselves. Uh, if you are, we're asking that you would consider not condemning it and giving us 60 days to purchase it and get it cleaned off ourselves. Let me ask this question, Mr. City Attorney or, or Code. Uh, if we went ahead and condemned it, uh, what's our procedure for going ahead? Uh, Tom, if you want to come to the microphone, remind me about how this would affect that effort. I think that he still wants the building gone, and I think in the past that we have amended the 30 days to maybe 90 days to give him 90 days to tear it down. And that way, if something happens, then we won't have to start over. Okay. All the woman. How far is the check? How far is the church located from this building? Uh, we are one house uh, removed from the building. Okay. Okay. What I think, uh, based on what I'm understanding, and certainly with the two council members, uh, will say uh, support or at least uh, non-objection, that we'll uh, uh, go ahead and amend this six, 30 days to 90 days, uh, which should give you plenty of time to deal with that. Uh, uh, with that, uh, anything else? No, sir. Moment? Thank you. Okay, no. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, uh, anyone else want to speak on this property? Let me adjourn the public hearing and ask for an amendment, Mr. City Attorney. That uh, I believe the amendment being discussed is within uh, Section 2 and within Section 3 that uh, the 30-day terms be amended to 90 days. Okay. Uh, do I hear an amendment to that effect? So moved. Move. Moved and seconded. Second. Uh, uh, any further discussion on the amendment to change 30 to 90? Uh, Ms. Whitby? Ross? Just one second. Okay, I have a question, though. After the 90 days, does the $50 a day go into effect? I assume everything goes into effect, but uh, after 90 days, that, uh, that would go in effect as it currently is read. Okay. So we're going ahead condemning it, but we're extending that, just extending 30 days to 90 days, but after 90 days, they still will be a fine of $50 a day, right? It, yeah. Okay, yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Move All for right. adoption is amended. Second. On the motion. Uh, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. RO 9134, Mayor Hayes. All right, uh, 90 days. Let's go you know, use that property. We, we, we like to support using property. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Next item. Uh, RO 9134. Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 224 East 16th Street in the city of North Little Rock to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing property owner a period of time to abate said nuisance. Do I have a motion? So moved. Wait. Second, moved and seconded. Uh, uh, let me uh, go ahead and call a public hearing uh, regarding the condemnation of 224 East 16th Street. That's 224 East 16th Street. Listed owner is U. M. Holloway the uh, third. Microphones open. Going once, going twice. Turn the public hearing. Call the roll, Ms. Ross. Whitman. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. <clears throat> Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. R O nine one thirty five. Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution approving amounts of liens to be certified to the Pulaski County Tax Collector against certain real properties as a result of grass cutting expenses and abatement of other nuisances in the City of North Little Rock. Don't think this needs an explanation. We've done Move this for Doc. Is there a second? Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. RO 9136, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to purchase certain real property located at 420 uh, West 13th Street. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mayor. Procedural matter. Do we need to have a hearing on 135? You're right. Uh, it does say convene a public hearing. I'm sorry. Uh, Correct. I'm yeah. supposed to catch no, that, aren't I? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Carter. No. Did oh, you catch didn't. that, Mr. City Attorney? I, I didn't get my flag out fast enough, Mayor. I need to <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, move. We expunge the uh, vote. <clears throat> Having voted, voted in the majority, I move to expunge the vote. Second. And I apologize for the error. On the motion? <laughs> Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Okay, now let's get a motion. We'll get a motion, then I'll convene the So point. moved. Is there a second? Second. Now let me convene a hearing on uh, certification of uh, uh, to the Pulaski County of 
liens against uh, as, uh, liens on behalf of the city as a result of grass cutting expenses and abatement of other nuisances. Uh, the legislation is itemized, uh, so you know feel free to come up and talk to us if you got anything you want to say. Going once, going twice. Adjourn the public hearing. Call the roll. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. R09136, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to purchase certain real property located at 420 West 13th Street in the city of North Little Rock and appropriating funds. Can I get a motion and I'll explain it? So move. Is there a second? Second. Uh, this is, uh, the appraisal was actually a little bit higher than this. Uh, uh, you know, this is in, in the entrance on the left-hand side as you go into our compound. You know, obviously uh, opportunities to, to add to compound acreage don't come uh, very often and certainly allows us to deal with the property in a way that's constructive. This has been owned, uh, you know, by family and I think the last resident uh, just recently passed away. So there's an I, that's the, that's the uh, property that uh, when you're traveling on 13th Street, it's on the left just right. before you go into the right across from the uh, main uh, uh, public works. Move for adoption. Uh, well, it's already moved for adoption. Oh, it's uh, okay. moving second on the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. R09137, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution appropriating funds for site preparation for construction of fire station number 11 in the city of North Little Rock. Can I get a motion and I'll explain that? So, uh, motion made and seconded. Second. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, we, we purchased the property out, uh, you know, for fire station number 11, uh, and, you know, there was some uh, fill that needs to be done. I know we've had our, uh, we've uh, 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 selected a uh, construction manager, and, you know, this amount should, you know, cover some of those costs as well as, uh, you know, preparation for the, uh, uh, for the fire station now recognizing that we've got a grant application in uh, for some I believe it's stimulus funding uh, but if not it's certainly a part of a pot that is out there to help us construct this we also you know, are going to move and and I uh, seeing if uh, the chiefs out there we also are uh, uh, moving forward uh, Chief Malden uh, with applying for grant funding that's available to help us support uh, the uh, hiring of fire uh, fighters uh, for this, both of which will have an effect, certainly more so uh, with the grant and, and hiring firefighters. And that seems, it's not necessarily stimulus funding. That's been, that grant opportunity has been there. And so we're moving forward with that. Uh, the the latter, the one with firefighters, is absolutely critical for us to be able to move forward to the fire station. Certainly, in the operation and maintenance budget items that we're currently dealing with, uh, but we're very hopeful that we will get some assistance in moving forward with the construction of this fire station. Chief Malden, uh, if there's anything I said that's an error or anything you want to add to it, you pretty well covered it, Mayor. You know this is work that's got to be done to get the station ready. Part of the grant, the stimulus money to build this station is uh, that gives us some priority it has to be shovel ready and right now this would help this be shovel ready and it needs to be done in the next couple of months because it has to be done during dry period and if we can't get it done in the next couple of months then we're probably going to have to wait till next year to get this done and uh, if we have to do that then our grant could be in jeopardy for this. So I, I want to emphasize that this is a step and uh, and we have yet to uh, you know, we've got several other steps. I just wanted to right. ensure folks uh, that, that they need to be mindful of. So if there's any other questions, please feel free. Alderman Witcher. Mayor, what are, what are the other steps? <laughs> well, the other steps are, are, you know, finding the money to build the fire station. Uh, we've got a grant request in. Uh, it's going to cost us, I think our projected cost is about a million, seven or eight. Million five, I believe. Million five. Yes, sir. So that money is a big step. And secondly, is finding assistance in helping fire, hire firefighters which is another grant opportunity that we're going to be submitting if we hadn't already. So there are two big steps left. Okay. I, I am curious if either of the uh, council members from that area have seen the design for that fire station. I've not seen the design. Neither have I. Okay. We want to get you all involved with it, obviously. Uh, it, we can uh, make that We're shooting for a LEED certification yes, fire station yes. uh, that's been reflected in the grant. I think we've talked about that on several yes, occasions, you know, to try to minimize uh, or enhance its uh, sustainability right. and minimize its uh, drawn utilities and others that other things that we think 
both enhance the grant application, but as well as provide for a, a fair, very economic structure to operate. Okay. So I'd encourage, uh, I mean, again, we got two big steps uh, that remain to be uh, seen uh, or remain to be accomplished, but I think we all want this to happen, and I think we want it to happen sooner than later, and this is a step that we feel is essential to get us in that direction. Yes, ma'am? Well, anytime any new station or anything new fire, uh, Station 5 in Park Hill, there's always question, will that station be shut down to move the firemen out there or something? I know that when this was brought up on the agenda that that brought all that to the forefront again and there were many questions. And I know we need the new fire station. We desperately need that new fire station. Absolutely. But then again, Park Hill does not want to lose a Station 5. So we, we have we made a commitment. Uh, keep, I certainly have that we do you. not intend to close Park Hill. Uh, okay. And that, that commitment is recalled and will be honored. Uh, again, I said that if you, you know, that a pig key is being able to afford both in the construction as well as in the operation. And these two grant opportunities, uh, the latter, which is with personnel, is, is much more of a, of a critical need. Uh, you know, we. We, we still have the ability to find capital money, you know, because of 25% uh, of that penny sales tax has to go to capital, and that's a good thing. Uh, so, you know, we, we have to find that, you know, whether it's there or not, you know, we're going to, in all likelihood, put together a package you know, that is similar to ones that we've done in the past about borrowing some funding to, to help operate certain or to help accomplish certain things. If not this year, I'm pretty sure we're going to be bringing one next year. You know, that opportunity will perhaps have a chance to address some of this, but nonetheless, the package uh, does have its limits. The second thing, which is, again, the more critical thing, is the ability to help, you know, we'll receive some funding to help hire uh, staff. And that, you know, you may recall within the last six months, I believe, Little Rock received, you know, funding from the same approach right. for a number of firemen. and. Right. and and so we, we have, I hope we have some optimism with regard to that. Uh, Little Rock, I think Conway and Jonesboro have all received funding for that. Uh, Auto and Robinson. You'll get us a copy of that, the yes, rendering? You okay. bet you. I'll get both of you a, a copy of the plans. I'll contact Foster Taggart and get you a copy. So okay. Like Why don't you not only get them a copy, but let's sit down and be prepared to go over it with either sure individually will. or collectively. Yes. Okay. And okay. obviously, Thank you. collectively, you need to <clears throat> make sure our media knows about it. Okay. Well, Mayor, the, the only comment I'll make is, you know, I, in, in thinking about this, this station, you know, I, I realize it's in an industrial area, and I realize that we're, we're trying to build a Leeds building, uh, but I guess when I visited with the architect one day uh, and asked about the building, he indicated it was going to be a metal building, and I, and I you know, I, I have some very definite feelings about uh, <clears throat> about about metal buildings being oh. for our public use and being around on a long-term basis and so that's that is one of the reasons why I ask specifically about about the the elevations for that building I'd like to see them too as a matter of fact if you don't okay. mind chief I mean every council member certainly is entitled to just yeah. call uh, the it, chief and I'm sure he'll schedule a, a set down uh, with <laughs> FOI in mind I, I, you know, I, I, I think they had the, yeah, I think they had the capability of sending that stuff to us electronically. So. Mm. However, however you, however you choose, okay. we certainly want okay. to share whatever information we have. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Uh, where are we, Miss Whitby? A motion and a second are pending. Uh, on the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Ro nine one thirty eight. Mayor Hayes. Um, please call it. A resolution approving participation by the City of North Little Rock under the Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism's Outdoor Recreation Grant Program for improvements at Sherman Park. I have a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any question, discussion on the motion? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. RO9139, Alderman Robinson and White? Please call it. A resolution authorizing the City of North Little Rock to apply for funds available through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Minority Health Youth Empowerment Grant Program. This is something, ma'am. This is something that uh, Alderman um, White and I um, are really happy about, and if we're able to get this grant, in which it's um, as stated, it's um, no matching funds required.
It would serve uh, kids, the after school program at Glenview, Sherman Park, and North Heights Recreation Centers. And um, we just hope that you all will uh, vote yes on this because this is something that is very much needed. Okay. Let's go ahead and get a motion before we start. Is, so moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? I'm going to do a commercial here for this. Um, I'm really excited about this opportunity. We've got very little time to make it happen. But um, it, it goes back a ways for me. Um, Alderman Witcher gave me some information some months ago about childhood obesity, and I was really surprised how the Municipal League is involved in that and has suggestions for how cities can, can touch that problem. Um, and then a little later, I had a, a, re a report from Alderman Taylor and found out that Arkansas is the second, has the second highest uh, number of obese children in the nation. It, tie, it ties with Ohio for adults. But there were a lot of things that started to fall into place. And then we have developed the Youth Task Force, which I see as an umbrella over a lot of things that are to come for our city uh, based on going to a few meetings. Um, and then I find out that the Parks Department has been, has developed something called a CATCH program, which is a program that's a comprehensive program of nutrition and general health for, uh, for children. So a lot of pieces have fallen together and then this grant came along and Linda was very wise to draw it to our attention and we're going for it and we would really appreciate your support on it. There's just a lot of things that this will be a good thing for. Also, another aspect of the, what we're asking for in this grant is the accidental um, uh, injuries and I, another thing fell into place for me this week, or last week rather, that I saw the, uh, a newspaper article that was written that said in 2008, 171 people died in Arkansas in crashes in which a driver or a motorcycle rider was intoxicated beyond the legal limit. And that's another area that this grant is going to touch along with some other things. So we've got a lot of issues that I think this is really relevant to and I hope we have your support. Uh, yes. I just wanted to say this before you did. We like free, no matching funds. <laughs> it's usually we, your we line. Do. We like free. I don't think you'll have any debate there. Uh, uh, well, one of the things that's kind of interesting, and, and, and this expands it a bit, but I certainly support it, and I want to compliment uh, you know, Alderwoman Robinson uh, and certainly Alderwoman White for moving this forward. Yeah, I know one of the things the mayor of Oklahoma City did and, and you know, got some national recognition, I think, for all the right reasons. He put Oklahoma City on a diet. Uh, and and that was, it was sort of a, a cute entree to an article, but I think we all recognize that obesity, you know, from childhood on through adult, you know, is is one of a contributing set of factors that certainly you know, degrades one's health uh, and and adds to uh, both medical and and certainly you know a variety of health issues. So uh, it's it's good that we're moving forward, and maybe we're not doing enough. One more area it does touch too is the green agenda with encouraging children to walk. I know there's a walk to do school day in October for our schools and other, you know, riding bicycles. Don't mention that right now. But um, there's a lot of things. It just touches a lot of parts of our lives. Amen. Uh, on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hans? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinances? Ordinance 0956, Mayor Hayes? Please call it. This is an ordinance we classify as certain property located near and around 717 Brett Road in the city of North Rock, Arkansas from R1, C2, and C6 Conservation in Greenbelt Wetland to I1, C2, R1 in Greenbelt Wetland classifications by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Rock, Arkansas adopting a minute land use plan for the subject property. First reading. All uh, right, let's take it to second reading. Move to suspend rules placed on second reading. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. An ordinance we classified in certain property located near and around 717 Brett Road in the city of North Rock, Arkansas, from R1 C2 C6 Conservation in Greenbelt Wetland to I1 C2 and R1 in Greenbelt Wetland classifications by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of North Rock, Arkansas, adopting a minute land use plan for the subject property. Second reading. 
Uh, let me just go ahead and mention, let's get a motion to spend the rules, but let me just mention, because I intend to go ahead and take this through, uh, it was approved with nine affirmative votes of the Planning Commission. I assume there were no negative uh, on August the 11th. Uh, so if anybody's got any questions. Isn't this the uh, sand operation? Uh, I think so, yeah, yeah. I think this and, is it. And we're needing to rezone some property so they can build a road. Isn't that correct, uh, Robert? Right. Mm -hmm. Robert's nodding yes. So let's uh, get a motion to spend the rule. So moved. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is an ordinance we class we classify in certain property located near and around 717 Brett Road in the city of Notre Rock, Arkansas, from R1C2C6 Conservation in Greenbelt Wetland to I1C2R1 in Greenbelt Wetland classifications by amending ordinance number 7697 of the city of Notre Rock, Arkansas, adopting amended land use plan for the search of property. Third and final reading. On the question. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Mm. Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinance 0957, Alderman Witcher, Ross, White, Taylor, and Gaines? I'll, I'll yield my co sponsors. Let's hope <laughs> y'all must drop it. <laughs> Do you want to read it one time and hold it, or, okay, if we may, please? This is an ordinance declaring a moratorium on the issue of permits for electronic changeable copy signs in the city of Notre Rock. First reading. Thank you. Be held. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Right. Next item. Ordinance 0958, Alderman Height and Ross. Please call it. Please call it. And then I've got a couple of questions of Mr. Carter on a this is an ordinance. <laughs> this is an ordinance amending number ordinance number 8128, the parking ordinance. First reading. Do you have a question? You want to? I'm going to ask Mr. Carter. I want to trying to avoid. I know you and I uh, had lunch about this and talked about it. Are there still any legal loopholes in this ordinance that we need to clear up before we uh, run it up the flagpole, uh, as you might say? But uh, the original. Let, let me let me tell you where I'm coming from. The original intent and purpose of of creating the parking districts, at least. My cause was to, to prohibit within the parking districts people parking vehicles of any type in their front yard or their side yards. And vehicles also included boats, trailers of any type, RVs, campers, etc. That, that or, this ordinance does that, correct? It does. I'll tell you this I, I've done some more work on this, Alderman Height, and to the extent that I've got. Uh, uh, some charts that I've made, but uh, when you get down to do some analysis, it points out the points of clarity that are probably necessary. A lot of the comments that we've heard today are probably good points of clarity that need to be made. And it's not to really change the rules that we have, but we just need to clarify what the position is and just try to make it as understanding as possible. I think probably we'd sit down and do just a little bit more work on it. We probably assuade a lot of concerns. Uh, and make it uh, a, a more understandable document for everybody involved. Okay. So you, we ought to hold it then until we can have that discussion. Is that correct? I would like for Mr. Carter to go ahead and explain where we are right now, if you don't mind, uh, <clears throat> because this is also pertaining to 60, which is coming up later. And I think if we explain it now, that will also explain on that one and save some time. If you don't mind. I'll be happy to. And if you'd like, I mean, I'll go ahead and pass some of these around just in case uh, you want to look at them. It'd be easier for me to explain it off of a chart where you can kind of follow along and see where we're at. And I don't know if I can fold up a paper airplane and shoot them over there to you. But uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for your assistance. While he's doing that, we're still trying to find a home for the cell phone. Does anyone here know Emily Barrow? Emily Barrow is trying to call this cell phone? No? Okay. Well, just keep it down in your office. I'm sure somebody and will come looking for it. I'll go through this as quickly as I can, but it's, uh, it's just based on trying to make a chart of what the rules are and how they apply as to, what, as to the rules right now, and, and, and I am trying to incorporate the proposed amendments. So the easiest way to do this is just to kind of start, start at the top and work actually from right to left instead of le left to right. It, it makes it easier to follow, at least 
the way I've explained it, others right. It's a little odd, but uh, just work with me. Uh, okay, because if you see up at the top in all residential areas, right, we're talking about all residential areas, you can't park in sidewalks and trails. Right, that's just a citywide rule. You can't park on sidewalks, you can't park on trails. You can park in your garage or your carport. You can park your vehicle there, you can park your recreational vehicle there, you can park your commercial vehicle there inside your garage or park carport, and the same rule goes for your backyard. You can park any vehicle that you've got in your backyard. The general citywide rule is you can park any vehicle in the, in the side yard. You can park your car, your truck, your passenger vehicle, commercial vehicle can be parked in the side yard. Uh, recreational vehicles can be parked in the side yard. The same goes true for your front yard, except there's a special rule about uh, commercial vehicles. We passed a rule a while back that said if you've got a commercial vehicle and you're parking it in your front yard, it's got to be on a pad uh, or some kind of a proper parking surface. So it's got to be parked on something if you have a commercial vehicle. And then as far as street parking goes, that was also updated in our last code where he said, you know, people can park their cars on the streets, but if you have recreational vehicles, boats, motorhomes, things of that nature. Uh, you can only park it on the street. That's the 72 hour rule, right, for loading and unloading. And you can only park commercial vehicles on the street for commercial purposes while they're conducting business to load and unload. Other than that, they can't be parked on the street. Is everybody tracking with the general rules for the city? Any question about that? Could, just a question then. What your definition of all vehicles that can be parked on the street? What does all mean? That, that means everything except for recreational and commercial vehicles, as defined by the statute. Cars and trucks. Okay. So now if we skip down to historic districts, and you can see, you know, you can track it across the same way, kind of, and there's still no parking on sidewalks or trails. You can park in your garage or your carport. Uh, you can park in your backyard. There's a new rule about the parking in the front yards and side yards that's restricted in historic districts, right? If you're going to park in your front or your side yard, it's got to be basically on a driveway, something that's going to link to the street, and that's the rule as it is today. Uh, in historic districts, you can still park on the street. Right now, there's no parking recreational commercial vehicles on the street at all. So uh, that's one of the things you'll see. I've got that highlighted in red. That's something that we need to talk about. One of the things for our restricted parking districts, we're saying, you know, with the proposed amendment, that it would be acceptable to park for up to 72 hours. We need to discuss whether or not that same kind of exception needs to be made in historic districts. Uh, skipping down to restricted parking districts, you can see under rule number one, no parking on city or trails. Uh, 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 yes, you can park in your garage or your carport. Yes, you can park in your backyard. But the front and side yard is basically the same rule as it is in historic districts. You can park on a driveway. You can on a proper parking surface, but you can't just park in your front or side yard if you're not on the driveway. That would not be permissible. Uh, the rules for uh, uh, parking on the street are basically the same as they are for all other places in the city. Uh, you can park a, a regular passenger vehicle on the street. You can't park recreational vehicles on the street, and you can't park commercial vehicles on the street. Uh, as far as uh, the second rule uh, goes uh, for restricted parking that pertains to the commercial and large recreational vehicles, and I think we had some comments about that earlier, and, uh, and I think you quoted the rule precisely. As to say, you know, as it pertains to large recreational or commercial vehicles, uh, there is uh, no parking, of course, on sidewalks or trails. Right now, it doesn't really provide for parking in a garage or carport, and that's, once again, highlighted in red, because I don't know if that's the way that uh, you intended that rule to be, and I want to be able to discuss that further. Uh, you could park uh, a large recreational vehicle or commercial vehicle in your backyard in a restricted parking district. That would be acceptable. Uh, but as far as uh, parking on the street, in the front yard or in the side yard, that would not be acceptable. You couldn't park there except for those loading and unloading rules that pertain to the large recreational vehicles and also to the commercial vehicles. And, and I won't go through the painstaking detail on that rule 2B because it's really not being proposed right now and, and the proposed <coughs> amendments to remove it. So uh, uh, I'll go through it if you want me to, but it's probably just superfluous. Uh, and I see hands raised. 
Alderman Robinson. Well, you said something about historic districts, and uh, I know Argenta. You know, that's a piece of legislation that I sponsored a couple of years ago, and uh, the people down there were adamant about, you know, the recreation vehicles and commercial vehicles. So you're not looking at changing that, are you? Really, our agenda has to be looked at separate because that was the first animal that was created, and it was just kind of invented on its own outside the statutory scheme. And and I don't think anybody's intending to change the rules that apply to our agenda. Okay. As long as as long as that one's working well, then you know, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's kind of that philosophy. Well, I haven't heard any complaints, so. <laughs> uh, anyone else? I got one. <clears throat> one of the things I think where the confusion is coming is when you say yard. When you say yard, we think of grass, but when you say yard, you're are including the driveway. You're including everything from the front of the house to the street. Is that right. correct? Well, and that uh, that may be trying to lawyer a common term, you know, and that's that's not a good thing to do. But that's what we do anyway, and uh, especially in our zoning ordinance, when we talk about your front yard, we're talking about the the distance between the front of the primary structure, usually your house, the front of your house to the street. That's your front yard. So when we say there's no parking in the front yard except for a proper paved surface, you know, or a proper parking surface, that means you can park on the driveway for automobile for vehicles right but no large rvs and no commercial vehicles the way it stands right now right the way that it's worded that you can't if if you adopt the second rule right under the restricted parking so that's the rule that prohibits parking large recreational vehicles or commercial vehicles in your front yard there's no exception there for proper paved surfaces the only exception that would be, that would apply as proposed in 0958 is the exception for 72 hours to load or unload large recreational vehicles and the exception for commercial vehicles when they're conducting business and loading and unloading. Okay, uh, under restricted parking rule 2A. Okay. And, and I'm going to ask Mr. Brandis if I can use him for an example. Okay. In, the, in my question. If, with your permission, I'd like to use yes, sir. you as an example. Mr. Brandis is the owner of a large recreational vehicle mm -hmm. that he parks in his driveway from time to time. And I have had discussion with Mr. Brandis about that and that under our parking ordinance, he can, he can technically, he can lawfully park that motorhome, motor coach, in his driveway for really as long as he wishes. Is that correct? Currently. Under the current rules, yes. Now, if, are you talking about after uh, a if, parking district's put in place? If we, if we uh, adopt the restricted parking area, uh, Rule 2A, yes. will he be able to park his uh, motor coach or his motor home in his driveway for as long as he chooses? He can park it there to load it and unload it. Only? Yes. Okay, what about, okay, and so this only applies, so then if the parking district chooses to enforce that rule, the parking district's going to have to vote on whether or not to choose that rule, is that correct? Right, because, I mean, part of what we're trying to, what we're talking about doing is amending the restricted parking district rules while someone is applying to become a, a restricted parking district. So uh, uh, I guess we're eating the soup while it's cooking. Well, let me, let me ask you another way then. If rule 1 and Rule 2 are separate, and the parking district could choose either or both of those rules to enforce, correct? Yes. Well, to say that they could choose either or both of those rules to enforce, they can choose either or both of those rules when they bring it to city council and apply and they you know, ask for a restricted parking district to be created. What this council does with it from them, from there, is up to this council. Okay, Alderman uh, Gaines. But, but Jason, that only affects, just only affects parking districts. It has nothing to do with anywhere else. Yes. Thank you. There's people out there on television sometimes, like me, don't understand that. Right. Sure. That's and that's kind of that's troublesome when people are channel surfing too. Yeah, yeah. Right. that could be troublesome. Right. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we clarified that. Okay. So any other uh, questions, comments? Uh, you know, this is sort of helpful and confusing at the same time. It is. It is, and that's where I, I would really 
like for us to take one more stab at trying to simplify this just a little bit more and, and uh, uh, possibly come back with a with an amendment next time if the sponsors are acceptable to that. Okay, uh, that'll be you're holding that legislation in. Yes. Okay. Probably a wise move. Next item. O O nine fifty nine Alderman Witcher. Call it please. This is an ordinance amending ordinance number seventy six ninety seven, the zoning ordinance establishing the acceptable level of light output of electronic changeable copy signs, establishing the method of measuring the light output of electronic changeable copy signs. First reading. Who suspend the rules replacing on second reading? Second. On a motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Pipe? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. In ordinance amending ordinance number 7697, the zoning ordinance establishing the acceptable level of light output of electronic changeable copy signs, establishing the method of measuring the light output of electronic changeable copy signs. Second reading. Move suspend the rules and place it on its third reading. Second. On the motion? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. In ordinance amending ordinance number 7697, the zoning ordinance establishing the acceptable level of light output of ch electronic changeable copy signs, establishing the method of measuring the light output of electronic changeable copy signs, third and final reading. My question, I, my question is this. We held the uh, moratorium uh, ordinance, but in the, in, the ordin in the moratorium ordinance, it refers to that we need, that the city needs some time to determine what's right and what's not right as far as electronic changeable copy signs. My question is, how do we know that this ordinance that deals with brightness is right or wrong? But it's right if you adopt it and it becomes law. It's wrong if you don't, and then they won't have to worry about it. Uh, you said you wanted to. You said you wanted to study. You wanted to study uh, <laughs> what other cities are doing. What you know, and and all the different legislation and and legal uh, action that's being concerned about uh, electronic changeable copy signs, and then you come up with a rule on brightness. Well, <clears> and they're kind of getting the cart before the horse. The other one, I don't know. All, yeah. I mean, right now we're in front of, you know, I mean, we're going to get another motion for adoption. We've read it the required times, you know, so it's up to this council whether it feels like it wants to move forward or not. Alderwoman Ross. Can I? Go, go ahead, Ms. Ross. I know this, this is Alderman Witchers, but I just wanted to, this is uh, concerning everything that's already in place. The moratorium is we don't know what's coming, we don't know what's in the future, and to prevent anything else, and this is on the recommendation of planning for what we have right now today. This is not looking at tomorrow. And I think it's some clarification of what, and perhaps a better way to, uh, we'll say, address what is our, what we think might be our intent. So Best all of which you don't want to ask questions for you, but, or answer questions for you, but your legislation. Yeah, you're doing good, Mayor. Would you like to hear an explanation from Mr. Voiles? Well, I'd like, I was going to ask if Mr. Voiles would like to make comment. Mayor, would you? And then I've got another question of Mr. Voiles and Mr. Carter. On this. Concerning okay. this. Yes, sir. As we, we explained, we went out and um, did a test on some of these signs and working with the industry, it was their recommendation. You need to turn these down about 25% of brightness at dark at night, or there, it's just the glare is intense. Uh, so it's a reasonable measure. The way to measure that uh, we found was to step back a certain distance with light meter and see how much brightness uh, by stepping the sign down. And the sign companies helped us with that exercise. So we came up with that going with the national recommended standard but I do encourage you to adopt it because right now I'm not sure we have one uh, so you know we do need to keep safety uh, in the forefront and that was the intent of this okay so what my, qu my question of you and then my question of Mr. Carter then this ordinance was it thought of after they discussed the moratorium or before the moratorium it was well before same time it was in time. same time but they're separate it was in the same meeting. Mr. Okay, then my question to Mr. Carter is how does this affect the signs that are in present in place in, in the city of North Little Rock? And, I'll, and I'm going to use, and I talked to Mr. Wiley this afternoon with Discount Tire, and he said that I could use him as an example. 
he's turning his sign off at night to the wee hours of the morning. And he's also dimmed his sign during the day. And, and uh, does his sign comply with this? We, we'd have to send somebody out to check it to see if it complies. But uh, one of the things, like Mr. Boyle said, uh, and I talked to Sean over in planning, and those guys did a lot of work to, to pull some national standards and then to go out and experiment with their light meter to see how this works with the ambient light to make sure can you still see the sign the owners of the signs are still happy at these light levels they don't appear to be intrusive it seems like a really good balance and our experiments matched up with what the national standards were saying and that's why we felt like it was a good light standard so it would apply yes to existing signs because that's a reasonable standard for existing signs and uh, and we would use that as a guideline and going forward so the existing signs then probably are fine in their in their current uh, settings. They probably are, but if they're not, I mean, the best thing they can do is just call us, and we'll go out there and put the light meter down and and see where they're at and kind of help them get their sign set. That's what we've been doing with uh, with the existing signs that are in the city, and uh, it, it's it's worked very cooperatively and uh, with no problem. I, upon adoption of this, I do not believe we'll be sending the light police out. You know, there <laughs> might be some complaints and we'll probably be complaint driven if that's the case. And then we certainly would work with the, uh, you know, with the business and trying to, you know, trying to be reasonable in terms of this uh, legislation should most, it be adopted. Most of the sign come, or the sign owners, they don't have light meters. They don't you know, sit there and measure it out, and they're, I think they're appreciative, and we'll go out there and help well, them get the things probably going to be very few citizens in the city of North Little Rock that drive up and down the major thoroughfares that these signs are located on are going to have a light meter also. Right. But we're going to get calls from them, and they're going to say that somebody's sign is too bright, and we have to send out the light police, and, and like the mayor referred to, and check them out. <clears throat> Mayor, before, be, before I go or I ask for the third reading, you know, as we deal with changeable copy signs, we're going to end up, in my opinion, and I might be wrong, having a series or, or adopting a series of regulations that will at some point in time formulate the foundation for our, our sign management in this city. And so this, this is step one in that in the absence of, of any guidance, we are going to provide guidance, which are national standards by the national signboard industry. And so we are following those recommendations and we'll see how they work. If they don't work, we'll go back and work on them again. So move to suspend rules and place it on its third reading. I think it's already been Second. suspended. I think we're just ready, ready for time. adopt on third and yes, final. Okay. Is there a second? second? Second. On the motion to adopt on third and final. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Ordinance 0960, Alderman Ross? Please call it. This is an ordinance establishing the Lakewood Restricted Parking District. First reading. I want to hold this next time for also for another public hearing to make sure and if anybody has any questions to be sure and let us know. I want to make sure that we all get on the same page. I understand it. I want to make sure that everyone else understands that. If anybody has any concerns about the RVs, the large RVs, one thing I want to make clear, a large RV is anything over 25 feet or 8 feet high. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Sorry, City Attorney. You're right. A commercial vehicle is any vehicle that requires a CDL license to drive. It's plain and simple. That's all it is. Correct? All right. Well, it's it, it, any construction vehicle. You know, we go. We've right. got some descriptions where it's. Okay. I think big construction type vehicles. The catch-all is the CDL. CDL. And then, okay. And then it's the school and then bus we have all, all right. And any. Uh, any, any commercial vehicle that's been altered, right? So uh, you can't. Nothing's plain and simple. Go. Nothing's right. simple, evidently. But right. that's a commercial okay. vehicle. Okay, you'll know it if you Hold see it. Hold it for a public hearing. Next item. Ordinance 0961, Alderman Taylor. Please call it. This is an ordinance allowing a special use for a daycare center in an R3 zone for certain real property located at 4509 Rogers in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. First reading. Move to spend the rules, place on the second reading. Let's see if we can get the vote, Mr. Robinson, then I'll recognize you. On the motion, spend the rules. Ross? 
Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Faggot. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Go ahead and read it, and then we'll, I, I'll recognize <coughs> Alderman Robinson. This is an ordinance allowing a special use for a daycare center in an R3 zone for certain real property located at 4509 Rogers in the city of North Rock, Arkansas. Second reading. I have two questions. Um, my first question is the hour of operation. And the second question is the number of children that will be at the facility. We have the uh, proponent uh, here. Uh, and if she'd come to the microphone and be willing to answer the questions, we'd appreciate it. Sorry. Thank you. The hours would be 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The number of children will be 15. Okay. What is your name, please? Lakeisha Stewart. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Stewart. Uh, uh, we are uh, ready for a motion to spend the rules, if that's the choice. Move to spend the rules, place it on third reading. Is there a second? Second. second. On the motion. Cross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. This is an ordinance allowing a special use for a daycare center in an R3 zone for certain real property located at 4509 Rogers in the city of North Rock, Arkansas. Third and final reading. I just want to ask the aldermen of that ward if they've had any, you know, any complaints, any questions, any comments, any concerns. We had, we have uh, I attended the planning meeting and uh, there were uh, the neighborhood association spoke in in favor of the uh, the legislation and also um, uh, a couple other neighbors as well as myself. So, you know, we we in Rose City we're always looking for. Uh, good, good, positive businesses to come to our neighborhood and help us with uh, with our revitalization. So we're looking forward to them, to them getting started. We wish that they would uh, take older kids. Maybe we can get them off the street. <laughs> uh, motion to adopt on third and final. So move. Second. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. On the emergency, Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. For 962, Alderman Taylor. Please call it. This is an ordinance accepting streets and drainage improvements within phase one of Cypress, Cypress Cross in addition in the city of North Rock. First reading. Move to suspend the rules. Place on the second reading. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. This is an ordinance accepting streets and drainage improvements within phase one of Cypress Cross in addition in the city of Notre Rock. Second reading. Move to suspend the rules and place it on third reading. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Baggett. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. In order to accept in streets and drainage improvements within phase one of Cypress Cross in addition in the city of North Rock, third and final reading. On the question. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Baggett? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Concludes new business. Thank you, uh, any council member, and then we'll turn it over to the four who have signed up. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'd just like to uh, give you all an update on our 